Hello, and welcome to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at a little shooting game. Why not? They're quite popular. So uh, let's go to, uh, well, this time instead of going to the Zim site, we're going to go to CodePen. So here's the Dan Zen code pen. And the first one at the moment, Dan Zen, actually you have to hit the public if you want to see this. So how do we do that? Let's see, on a dashboard. Uh, that's the dashboard. On a profile, if you arrive at Dan Zen, so this is codepen.io slash Dan Zen, I think you'll see an arrow and then you'll see these other ones and maybe view all pens that's one way to get to it or you can hit public like that and currently it's the latest public one this one right here and we're going to press it now uh, must silence that droning so uh, this one's called peace and here's what it looks like so we shoot these things and then when there's peace you get points. See my points go up? Ah, oh, peace. And if there's too many of these things, so if they all come in, let's uh, let some of them come in here. Hopefully this isn't too loud over top of my speaking. But now there's four and five and now we start losing points as well so uh, and it goes red down below so we we want to get rid of these things well which I'm not gonna end up doing how do we get out of this thing let me just go back ah peace <laughs> there's there's how we get some peace so are you at all interested in seeing how that all works um, at its basis what we can do we can turn off the sound let's bring in that sound again there's the piece that we get to start, and we'll pause that sound, and that way we can kind of play around with it without the sound coming through. Does that sound good? <laughs> we'll have some peace. So how this started, by the way, is uh, somebody else on CodePen made this little slidey thing in uh, processing, or P5.js, the JavaScript version of processing. And they had put together, well, not a lot of work to do it, but I mean, it's in here. There's a URL to it. And I saw that, and I like to compare Zim to processing sometimes, or other other frameworks as well, to uh, inevitably, it seems, Zim has less code, uh, like sometimes by a lot. I think we just built something with 20% of some other code. But with processing, it has been in the past 60%. So that's almost half as much as the processing code. So I went to build this little thing at the bottom. <laughs> and then I got a little carried away in that um, it was easy enough to just build this thing along the bottom and to shoot something like that. But no, we have a little a uh, little emitter there, and then that that looked kind of cool. So uh, the the other fellow who who had built something was shooting squares, and I think he's since added some triangles and stuff. But we took our square and we made the corner too big, and that looks like this. And then it has, hey, you know, those look like drones. Oh, that's kind of neat. I thought I could make a helicopter with it. And instead of shooting helicopters and potentially killing people, which I don't really like, and this Dan Zen fellow here is peaceful, <laughs> um, now it's like the drones are coming, it's our privacy or what have you, and, and we're just shooting drones to, to keep silence. You know, like, oh, I want some peace and silence. Peace and silence. Peace and silence, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, and so that had a play on the on the sort of the army thing here of, of peace or the anti-army thing. And uh, so that's where we're at. Okay, maybe before we jump into the more complex code, because this is now all the the code that was uh, used to put together. So there's what we're what we're looking through, basically on the left hand side, and we'll make that bigger so that we can we can see that maybe. That, make that bigger like that, something like that anyway. Uh, but before we do that, let's pop on out to the Zim site. I'm going to, this is zimjs.com, zimjs.com, and press on code. And I'm going to hit copy, that copies the template. And uh, let's see, 
we'll pop on over into Zim. That looks like we were working on some things here. We'll make a new file. Make a file and paste. Let's reduce this and make our code bigger so that you can see. This is the template then that we've just popped in here, but let's uh, save this as. Uh, where are we going to put this? In code. Uh, what are we doing? We're doing an explorer. So A, B, C, D, E, explore. And look at all of our explorers. This may be quite small for you, but anyway, there's now, oh, I don't know, many files, a couple hundred files in there of things that we've been exploring. And we will call this drones, I guess. Drones. I hope we can call it that .html. And uh, there we go. So this is how we would get started on something like that. And we would say drones. Uh, we may not even make a drone at the moment, but anyway, we're, we're on uh, Zim 10.5.5. Uh, and then down in here is the Zim template. We can get rid of the parts where it says, hey, we have a circle. Actually, we could use that circle. There's a circle, and uh, I, I just wanted to demonstrate the, the motion controller that we're using there. So we're going to open that up in a browser. Right now we're dragging. So that's what the template gives us, a draggable circle. Uh, but if we don't want to drag, we can add a motion controller. So we'll stick this in a, a variable here. Const circle is equal to that circle. And it is indeed centered on the stage. Although if we were putting it down at the bottom, we might want to uh, put that at the bottom. We'll center it on the stage, which is fine. But we can also dot pose. If we can spell pose, we can we can do that. And then the first parameter is the x. So we don't want to adjust the x. We want to keep that centered. But we will adjust this thing and make it 50. Uh, this this place right here, the third parameter is do you want it from the right? So you would put in true. We could put false there. Uh, or null for nothing. The default is false, not from the right. The default's from the left, obviously. Also, the default's from the top. This part says make it from the bottom. So pose takes a little bit of getting used to. So you got that? It's x, y. Do we want it posed from the right-hand side? You would put true, otherwise it will be from the left-hand side. And then do you want it posed from the bottom? So this is like your HTML left top, right, bottom kind of thing, but all done in a chainable method here. So we center it, and then we pose it 50. Now when we do that, it's not the registration point, it's the edge of the object. So it's the bounding box that is 50 up from the bottom. And let's have a look there. We already have this in a browser, I think we did. Yep. So we refresh. Now it's 50 up from the bottom there, it's, it's not dragging. But uh, let's make it a bit smaller. We're going to move that along the bottom as if it's our player. Now this is one of the things that took a little bit more coding in, in some other library that doesn't happen to have a motion controller. But Zim does have a motion controller, so you're welcome to use that. So that looks like new motion controller. And then we say what we're going to motion control. And uh, this would be roughly the, the default there. So let's see what that, what that gives us. We refresh here. When we click, it heads towards the click. So it's not a mouse move, it's a mouse down or something like that. So wherever we mouse down to, this is where that thing will go. And you can adjust speed and stuff. And there's, there's maybe half a dozen different types of motion controllers. I think the next thing on here, well, I can't remember for sure, might be the speed. If we go into code here and uh, come back to Zim and hit docs, and then we enter motion controller, we might need to see what's in here. So yeah, the type is the next thing followed by the speed. So the, the different types, if you scroll on down to the, to the parameters, sorry, let me scroll down past the parameters, there's the target, so what are we wanting to control? And here's the type. Default is mouse down. So we can do it on mouse move, press move, key down, which is actually what we want. We want key down. So uh, 
Let's do that then. New motion controller. Key. Let's pull the key down. We can do it. There it is. So there's the key down. And let's see what our. That's not it. Here it is. Refresh. So now there's no movement and press, but if I use the keys, there it is kind of zipping along. And again, you can apply certain damping to that. But that's the, uh, the left and right keys being used. Now that alone is pretty tricky to do that kind of key down stuff. Um, there's some nuances to it. All right, so aside from that, uh, that's key down, but if we only want the key down to move along the horizontal, then that's the axis. And now we're running into some problems here if we look at the documentation. So now we want the axis. Oh, well, that's not too far away. So we could give it a speed and then go to the axis and a boundary. Yeah, so that's not bad. We might want some damping. Here's damping. It's, it's after a few other things here to set the damping. Uh, it's hard to say. Right now we're we're using just regular parameters like that, but so that we know what we're doing, maybe we'll drop to the Zoom Duo technique. So we have squiggly brackets around it. We say object, oh, I think it's target. We tend to use two things to specify uh, another object. Uh, one might be OBJ, like in particle emitter, we pass in an OBJ. But uh, for animating and, and indeed the motion controller, we consider it the target. Um, so anyway, just have to check the docs on that. And this is the type. Many of the other Zim components don't have a type specifically. They have things like um, button type or uh, I don't know, indicator type or something. Um, because type becomes a keyword, uh, or something like that, maybe. Oh, right, uh, each Zim object has a type. And so if you want to later adjust the type with a property, you're, you can't because there is no type property. So we did some switch ups on most of Zim, but the controls uh, don't necessarily have properties like that that you're adjusting. So we've left the controls just as, as type like that. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. It is an explore, and so sometimes as we explore, we'll just mention things that come to mind. It's a little bit more free form. I don't want to necessarily race through things. Uh, the idea is that we all learn together. So hopefully you're all right with that kind of stuff as we continue on here, and hello there. I, it's always tricky sometimes to remember that you guys are out there. <laughs> You'll be listening to this as I blab on here. All right, new motion controller. Uh, targets a circle. The key, uh, the type is the key down. But what else are we wanting to do? Uh, we want the axis. Is uh, by the way, the motion controller as well. Just reminded me with axis works with game sticks as well, joy pads or game pads. So you can use a joystick on this or, or gamepad buttons as well. The axis is horizontal. Horizontal. And uh, what else are we doing in here? And we, we can add a bit of damping if we want damp of uh, 0.2 maybe. So we'll save that up and let's see what happens. Uh, one thing that we haven't done yet is the uh, boundaries. So there she be, and now I'm I, I, up and down keys don't work, only the left and right keys work. And you can kind of see that it sort of slides, a, well, I maybe you can't tell, it slides a little bit farther than when I let go. So that seems pretty good. You can adjust the speed of that. The speed is here, oops, speed. Well, I'm not sure what the speed is now, but um, if we put uh, 40, let's see how fast that goes. We refresh here. Whew. So that makes it uh, much easier because and makes it faster to get to the boundary. <laughs> but anyway, uh, perhaps uh, 40 is too much. And then a boundary. Boundary. A while back in Zim we we decided that it was a pain in the neck to be using Zim rectangles. Uh, which we use quite a lot, and create JS rectangles. 
So we got rid of the only time we were really using create.js rectangles, which, is, which isn't even a, a visual rectangle, a create.js rectangle is a data rectangle for things like boundaries. Um, and so that was just confusing for people. So we said, well, okay, if we're only using this for boundaries, let's make a new boundary object, new boundary. And then we can specify a boundary in here. The circles are center reg. So if we start at zero, and uh, this would be the circle's height, circle dot, uh, or sorry, Y position, I guess. And then this is the width, the stage width. And this one is how uh, high is this boundary? And this boundary is zero. So this gives us a boundary. Now let's uh, take a look. So now it won't, it'll go half off the stage, but no further. So there it goes half off the stage Ugh, and I can't go any further so that's our boundary I can't go up so that's how we created that and you can see that um, it's a little less code or it's an, well it, is, it probably is less code but it's also I think easier code to put together we just specify a few things and then Zim handles uh, everything but boundaries and and uh, damping axis and stuff like that. All right, good. So that's what I wanted to show you with live code. Now let's move into the, the code pen version and kind of go through what else uh, happens as you start to build the game like this. F11. Now, unfortunately, when we make the code bigger, we also make all this stuff bigger as well. You know what? It's almost worth it. Aside from the, the testing here, it's almost worth it to cut and paste this and just work in Atom. I've done this before, gone into CodePen to work in CodePen, but it's a little bit harder for you guys to see because basically all this area here is wasted. Anyway, here's the top of the CodePen. Now, with CodePen, we have settings, and when you go into JavaScript here in the settings, Here's us bringing in CreateJS in our new our new um, CDN there, and here's us bringing in Zim 5.10.5.5. We're also bringing in a thing to make an, the icon. That's the, the thing down there in the right hand corner. This thing right here, just a way easy way for us to do that. And we're bringing in the game module. So the game module was used, you really don't need the game module, but it gives us this timer over here and the score er, time er, score er. Often we want to use the variable score, which might, uh, I don't know, not conflict, but it was always kind of weird. Um, so we left it consistent with a, hi, I'm recording. Uh, ignore that. Somebody's just come home and uh, was saying hello. So here we are. We're in this thing. And so in other words, we don't need, we're up at the top, we don't need to bring in, this is code pen, we don't need to bring in any of the HTML. All that was taken care of in the settings so we can just get going. We did make some sounds. So those sounds were made with my mouth. And I just went <laughs> sort of thing. and. Um, got some sounds and I don't know if you could tell you probably could we're also bringing in now this is the array of assets we're also bringing in a font from Google that gives us this font right here it's a stencil font or something like that and then we're saying that the path this uh, we we've uploaded those sounds to CodePen, and this happens to be the path to our asset library in CodePen. Because we're loading sounds, we have created a new waiter. That means that as we are waiting for the sounds, a little yellow dot 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 will show up. And this is a normal fit template right here. I made it a bit narrower to match the, the example that I was uh, started copying. And then we're bringing in the assets here after the, the color in the background or the outer color. We're bringing in the assets, we're bringing in the path and the waiter. So you can't just put this stuff up here. You've got to actually pass it into the frame as well as the last, well, as, as those three uh, 
parameters or arguments. There's more later, more parameters later, but this is all we need for now. On CodePen, we tend to use ES6 in here, and note that we're using ES6. So that's how we've divided up a bit. Many of the Zim examples and, and uh, videos and so forth are not ES6, they're ES5 or whatever. Uh, but in CodePen, we thought that we would continue, or, you know, we would start to use ES6. All right, so when the frame's ready, we come on down. We This is the template stuff, code here, yay. Now, CodePen itself uh, seems to conflict with the key down in, in frames. So there's something that uh, just doesn't work properly. So frame.allow default, there's also a parameter up here for allow default. Uh, but it's a little ways along, so we would have had to adjust or gone to the Zim Duo technique probably and thought I would just leave it like this. Remember, this was going to start off as a simple comparison. I wanted this to be relatively um, short looking. So rather rather than, and actually, uh, we weren't even going to do sounds and all this kind of stuff as well. So it would have just been that to start off Zim. Oh, not even uh, that to start off Zim. And I didn't want to have to go to the the squiggly brackets of the Zim Duo technique and put names of all of these things just to get to the allow default. So there happens to be also an allow default property that we can set after we start. And there she be um, true. That just lets CodePen pay attention to our keystrokes. Otherwise, it doesn't seem to. Now these would come later usually. Sometimes you have enough forethought to put them first in a game, but quite often as you continue to build, you start hard coding things. So that's how you would make a game usually, is you hard code these numbers, and then you realize, okay, well, you know, we might want to fiddle with that to, to see like a minimum time and a maximum time. So these are things that allow you to balance the game, and it's usually a good idea to come up and put them up top somewhere so you can just easily change these things and balance your game and play. You don't have to go hunt around for these types of things. But they don't often, or I don't think so anyway, they don't often start off here up top. They usually, as you're building, um, are down here. Now, the fellow that had made something before was practicing his object or programming, and I wanted to make sure that people know that that can be done just fine in ES6, in Zim, no problem. So here's a class tank. It's extending a container. So this is ES6 class format. Uh, we call the constructor, well, sorry, this is the constructor. We're defining the constructor here. We're making so that it can receive a color. The default color will be a Zim darker color. In Zim, when we create or when we extend a container or anything, we have to call the super class. So super will call, eventually we'll call create.js's container. Um, although it first calls Zim's container, then calls create.js's container. And that's necessary for CreateJS to work properly. It's just um, their system that's got to that's got to be done. We're storing, in a sense, a local variable. It's not really a private variable because it's not private. And JavaScript class system doesn't have private variables. It's like holy cow, come on, erg, erg, close. But anyway, we are, are putting it in underscore color. And whatever color gets passed in there, sorry about that, whatever color gets passed in there, we're storing, um, in a sense, a, a reference on the class to that. And then here's how we can build with some rectangles. This represents the container. So the neat thing is when we make a new tank, that tank is a container. So, uh, and that container is referenced as to this. So we're making a new rectangle and adding it to this. We make another rectangle, add it to this and move it around. So basically what we're doing is we're building this thing at the bottom, which was um, constructed initially by the, the original uh, creator, I guess. And we just mimicked it as a tank. Here's a class for the projectile. Uh, I don't think normally, probably we would have just made it, we would, I would have said um, var, or const tank equals a new container, and then I would have added these things to the tank, 
or to to that container and just work with instead of classes I would have worked just with a, a container called tank and same with projectiles and stuff but you can I mean there are some benefits of starting with um, with a class for instance we've also put shoot in here so this is not a class at all this is this is a method so this is a shoot method that's on the uh, tank class sorry about that and here's the the color um, so there, there are some handy things, I suppose, to, to have an object, and plus if we have another game or something, we maybe could just copy and paste this tank over and have another tank right, ready for us. Uh, this is how you do the getter setter method in ES6. Here's how you do just a normal method. We're going to receive a projectile, and then this thing's going to shoot it. So it, it locates it at the tank. So this dot X and it, it locates it up. So we're shooting from this tank here. It's going to start here, uh, but we've moved it up a little bit so that when we animate it, it doesn't take extra time to go from here to here. Because when you shoot, you actually put it up above that, I think, uh, minus, like it's Y minus 50. So Y is here, minus 50 is about in here, because we found that as we move along and shoot, um, you see how as, as uh, well, let me move one way, those bullets seem to be behind the tank. If you start the bullets from the center of the tank, which is where the registration point or the origin is, if you um, start it from there, you're going to end up uh, maybe that's not where the origin is. I guess it is. Anyway, um, you're going to end up waiting longer, and the delay, the delay looks even more delayed. So, anyway, um, we started up a bit higher because of that. Locating it. Uh, oh, and then when we shoot a projectile, we're going to add that projectile to a future container called projectiles. Now, that brings up a point here, an object-oriented coding. That's not the best practice to put in a reference to something else. So this is a reference to something outside the class. It may not even exist. Um, we've coded this and we know it exists, but in proper object-oriented programming, you would pass that in here. You would say uh, container, no, what is it, projectiles, projectiles and equals uh, no default so you would force but mind you if you're forced yeah so you would be forcing them to to add that in there which it would have to come before you don't force which would be kind of annoying but anyway that's that's what you would do and then you would as you um, make a tank you would pass in a reference to the container that's going to hold your projectiles anyway that's one way to do it um, and then we're animating that projectile as well to position y of minus 20. So in other words, up, up, up above the start of the stage. So y0 is the top, the top of the stage, and y minus 20 is up above the top. So we got that, and we're shooting linear. It's important when you shoot to shoot linear, unless you're shooting some sort of rocket that has a fuse, and it sort of starts off slow, and then it goes and goes fast. But usually bullets are linear. In a certain amount of time. Now that time shouldn't be there, should it? So uh, it should be something like const bullet time is equal to 1,000. Because that's something. If if your bullets are going too fast or too slow, you want to be able to have access to that. And then we have bullet time here. Sound good? We can adjust that. When we're done, we're calling. Uh, we're calling the function right here, this um, anonymous function, arrow function. We're passing in, or we receive the target. We're not passing in, we're receiving the target. So that's the target parameter. That allows us to find out in this function here what was calling it. Uh, and indeed, we've just animated a certain projectile. So that's what it is, and we're removing it. It's important to remove those projectiles. We might have a lot of them. You don't want a bunch of projectiles or, or containers, whatever they are. I think the projectile is actually a, a rectangle. You don't want those sitting around. I'm not sure how CreateJS treats a bunch of um, rectangles that are off stage. It may be fine, but uh, if you remove them from the stage, then definitely uh, we're fine. 
So that also was different than the original fellow's shooting. The original fellow shooting was, you know, calculated, probably done in a request animation frame, sort of manually animated, and uh, using greater than and less thans to and plus equals and stuff like that. So it's not that necessarily this is shorter, but it fits in with the rest of the Zim system. We animate all the time. It's really easy for us to animate something going up to minus one. It took like took a minute, not even a minute, and it was a no-brainer. So that's much easier and faster to create than uh, not only there's other benefits too. We can just say pause animate, and we do actually. As a matter of fact, well, not with the bullets, but this whole thing when we start off here run that thing. When we run this thing, it's all sitting at a pause animate, so nothing is animating. And then when we press, then we get any animations and starts and stuff like that. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, we could easily put in a pause button and then just use pause animate and they all pause. If you're coding your own bullets that are moving and, and stuff, that's a little harder to do. You, You'd have to put a check variable or something like that in the request animation frame, you know, like a play check. And we did a little bit of that stuff too, I think. But um, there are some benefits to having stuff move around with animate. Okay, and then the getter and setter to set the color because you see right now it's red because we're, we're giving a warning. That's actually just wanted to show that we could do a getter and setter as well in there and I thought hey the color might be handy. We can't set the color directly because this tank is made up of a whole bunch of rectangles. We could do something like loop through all the children of the tank and get get whichever rectangle that is and then set its color. So that would be a possible way of, of looping. As, well, is that what we did? Oh, sorry, that's what we did here. <laughs> so from the outside if we wanted to change a color we could do that but, but if we need to change a color, why make somebody do it from the outside? We may as well put it right here in here. And so that allows us to say something like tank.color equals red. It will then get set here. And note that whatever color we pass in, we're setting to underscore color. What that does is it allows us, if we ever ask what the color is, as a matter of fact, I think we might down below say, hey, if the color is this, then do something, you know. Then we're going to end up returning this dot underscore color. So this is the getter part of the getter setter, at which point it's important to have in our local variable, or whatever you want to call that, a local property, it's important to have what the last color set was. So that's why we assign it here. So whatever, if somebody changes the color, then we uh, collect it and we assign it to our local variable so later if we ever get asked what the color is we're able to return it. All right there we got to the projectile and it is extending a rectangle again the rectangle super needs to be called and indeed there's not much to this as you can see we're uh, you know it's we've simply in the end the projectile only has three parameters where a rectangle has more so we're automatically making a curved um, top to it, a bullet. You can, it goes so fast you can hardly see it, but we're making a bullet and that's done. This is all the corner parameters, so the corner says make the left half the width, make the right half the width, make the mm, bottom right uh, zero, and make the bottom left zero, so square. So squares on the bottom and rounded on the tops calling the super. So basically the projectile is just a rectangle that, and we did that too. And same with the target. The target was a bunch of squares, but look what we've done with the target. We've made the top and the bottom have a corner of the width, whereas the, the bottom two have a corner of half the width. So half the width would make a circle, like a curve, a, a perfect circle joining the sides of the rectangle but a full width is like weird. It, um, it goes too far and makes these curves that end up looking like copters. <laughs> Looks like that. So there's the bottom curves, but the top curves are, are just going haywire and kind of crossing 
the rectangle over on itself, which has this thing called winding. It's sort of, um, uh, it's kind of neat. Anyway, that's what it looks like when you overextend a corner. So that's handy. We can make little stars and things like that too, if we want. If Of course, we could have made this a shape and drawn whatever shape we wanted in the shape. Or it could have been a picture or a bitmap, like brought a bitmap in, etc. But this was a nice, fast way to, to create something. So there we go. All right, moving through, we now are through our classes. We're, we're coming in. We're going to just, here's the different parts. So here's a floor. That's this rectangle along the bottom. We make the new tank and pass in whatever our tank color up above is, you know, one of the things that we can change. Scaled that a little bit, center ridged, and positioned it at the bottom, much like we did that circle in our very early example that we did with the, the motion controller. We're setting up the boundary. Now there's a little bit of a cheat here. Well, not too much of a cheat because on mobile we don't have key presses. So uh, what happened, the guy uh, who we copied the initial part of this from, he, uh, it's funny, when, when we first um, built what, you know, re relative to what he was done, had done, he had no mobile thing, but I happened to refer to it a, a bit later. I took a look at it and it looked like he was still working on it and he added some buttons for mobile. His buttons are there all the time. It would probably be best to choose to do mobile or not. So this is what it looks like. I, I, this is at, Zim's asking, hey, is it mobile? Well, if it is, then it's going to do all of this stuff. Else it's just going to make a motion controller like we did. But if we are mobile, unfortunately, we have to make some buttons. So now I'm going to run it. Although this is... I don't think this is up. Yeah, so here's here's what mobile looks like. So these things kind of come into play, and uh, you also press, you tap on the screen. So it's kind of hard to do. Uh, it's kind of hard to do when you don't have mobile. Uh, <laughs> you, get, you get the idea. You move around with buttons, and then you tap on the screen to to shoot um, the the things. So that's for mobile. Uh, let's not bother going through what we did for mobile. One of the things that you'll note in uh, is just basically making some tabs. We made some tabs. We applied them into a, a motion controller, a custom motion controller, because we can use the same boundary on it and stuff like that. Uh, there's the custom, custom type custom. And when we do a custom, you have to run just quickly here a ticker, and we're taking whatever the left and right is from the buttons, like uh, we get a, a, a number any times that's pressed, because you want to hold down on the button. So, oh, sorry about that. So you want to hold down on the button as well. It's not it's not just a tap to move it. It's a tap and hold. And so that's, we brought the motion controller in there. So you're welcome to look at that. We're planning, by the way, on making a D-pad. So on mobile, we've run into this before. Anytime you're using keypads and, and you know, you don't have that on mobile. So we can make a directional pad, just a little circle here that somebody can with one hand move around almost like a fake joystick. So we're probably going to roll that in with a radial interface. Uh, we've been planning a radial interface for some time where you can have a radial menu. And I suppose the D-pad really is just a radial menu. So that's why we'll, we'll consolidate that uh, most likely, I suspect. Anyway. So um, note that uh, CodePen has the ability to collapse. So we're sitting on the if mobile and it was it's going to do all this stuff. But if I press that, it collapses that whole inner if and then else not mobile. So that's what we've done presentation mode wise. Save that up. Oh, except this is mobile. So if it's mobile, it does something in there. If it's not mobile, then it does this. And there's our motion controller. So that's just the same as what we had built before. Smoke, the emitter. So the smoke is when we shoot, when we go pew, pew, shoot. Yeah, there it is. Wait a minute, uh, run. I was still running the mobile one. So there's the shoot. Now it doesn't shoot when I press on the... So isn't that smoke cute? It's just a little circles in a... And then we've got some big particle emitters. There's the big particle particle emitters as the thing blows up. 
So smoke is a new emitter. One of the things uh, we adjusted the angle, we made more things come out. Uh, an emitter, we could have just said new emitter like this. You want to see what that would look like? So we save that and we, we would end up, uh, I'm running it now, we would end up with the traditional emitter. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the traditional emitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like blowing bubbles, but that's the emitter going at, at full speed because we didn't I'm gonna undo this, save that. We didn't add the start pause true. So that's what an emitter looks like. It's a matter of then fine tuning it in certain ways. We thought, hey, we keep with the, the dark or the black and yellow theme kind of. So now uh, go back to not shooting, but there's the shoot. Padoop, padoop, padoop. And we played with the life and decay and gravity and various things like that in the emitter to make that smoke small, hold within, and, and work the way we wanted it to. We also put it in the tank itself. So as we move the tank along, uh, let's get rid of some of those for the same color. As we move the tank along, note that the smoke moves with the tank. It may not be perfectly or perfect match to the physical world. Uh, the physical world might be more like bullets where the bullet actually I think the bullets also move. Yeah crap that's what's going on. Um, yeah we should adjust that. We should maybe add the bullets because bullets don't have much wind going on. So really the bullets should follow the tank along and therefore we should add the bullets to the, the tank as well. Darn, forgot about that. Uh, but we did want uh, a little while ago. A little while ago, we separated the. Uh, well, maybe this doesn't have anything to do. But we separated the particles from the actual emitter, so that the emitter. Um, yeah, because before what would be happening is if if the emitter were in the tank. Oh, we're not even using the emitter for the bullets. But anyway. Um, for the emitter, if you move the emitter around, all the particles would move around as well. And you don't always want that, so we, a little while ago, separated out the emitter so the particles are in a separate container, and the emitter is its own thing as well. So you can move the emitter, but then the particles kind of stay where they were. That's what we found uh, is usually desired. But if we were using an emitter, we could use an emitter to shoot this. Um, the emitter has this thing. Let's, let's go see. So here's... Here's a shooting uh, frame dot on key down. So when we key down, if we're able to shoot and the key code is right, so this is either the arrow or the space bar, then uh, we're spurting. So that's that's nice, huh? Uh, Can't smoke. So smoke is the emitter. It's it's start paused is true. So when we say smoke dot spurt, that sends uh, ten of those things. If you want to see 40 of those things, here's what that would look like. So, so it just would, would last longer. Do you see it? Or like that, kind of a longer. And you can handle it in other ways. You can spurt for a long time, and then when you mouse up, stop spurting spurting. <laughs> anyway, uh, where did we get to? But do, 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 do. Undo that. The spurt of 10 is fine. We're also shooting. So this is what object-oriented programming does for you. It just says tank.shoot. We're passing in a new projectile. Um, quite often in a game like this, it's, it's fairly simple. I would just probably, like I said, make a tank without a shoot method. And then I'd be here and I'd say, okay, now I've got to add the stuff for that projectile. So I basically would be taking this, this, copying that, and that would be down in here when I go to shoot. So here would be shoot, and all that stuff would be in here. So I'd end up with something like that. And it just makes our key down a little bit longer. You know, we've got some more complicated stuff in here that really could be considered part of the tank. So now it's a bit simpler. So sometimes, or well, almost all the time, making classes and objects from classes will make your main code like this simpler because you took all the stuff that was, you know, all this stuff is not in your main code anymore. It's abstracted, separate. And you can repeat that, do it 
over again anytime you want. So certainly if you're making a bunch of things, and those things are a little complicated. If you're making a bunch of copters like this, you saw that's not complicated. You could certainly avoid making classes for the for the targets there. But uh, something more complicated, like the shooting of a of a tank and, and the movement of the tank, all that kind of stuff, maybe you do want that <clears throat> in a class. All right. So where do we get to here? Making the targets, uh, shooting, great. Scores, every time we shoot, I'm taking away some, and that score amount should have been put up top as well. So we should take that and say, um, what would this be called? Shoot cost, perhaps? So plus minus shoot cost. And then we come on up here, what was that shoot cost? It was minus one. We go right into here somewhere and say const shoot shoot cost equals minus, I'm thinking it can almost be minus five. Yeah, because I'd like to try and encourage you to aim a little bit. Just want to make sure it's working. The, we'd like to encourage the player to aim. So every time I'm shooting, if I if I'm doing this now, oh, uh, we did take away the holding down shooting, but now I'm minus fiving each time, uh, and that might balance the game a little bit better to make sure that you don't just cheat and just. I mean that's all right. Even if you do, you gotta move to the right place. But um, anyway, so we've just taken away five now. And that's what I mean by uh, balancing the game. That kind of stuff. All right. Uh, we, we better move along here. Huh? We're taking a bit of time. These explorers are supposed to be about half an hour, and I suspect that we're working in the, the realm of uh, ooh, 40 minutes now, something like that, 30, 40 minutes already. So where did we get to? Make targets. We're using a Zim interval and between a min and a max time. That's something cool about a Zim interval is it doesn't always have to be the same time. And we built this like this exactly for these types of games where, hey, we don't want these targets to come in. Here's a target. Here's a target. Here's a target. Here's a target. You know, right, right on uh, the same interval each time. And so we can run the targets between min and max. You could keep on adding these forever, and you just have to shoot them all. I decided to stop, uh, balance the game a little bit at five, and as soon as you hit five, it starts taking away the points you have. And that's uh, that's different. This is a bit unique. I haven't seen a game, really, that has these, uh, these parameters. So uh, that makes it a bit more fun to play. You know, it's, it's something a bit, you know, you got to work out what you're doing there. And it also balances things like sound. When they're all gone, you're trying you're trying to get it so that they're all gone. If they're constantly coming in, that's sometimes hard to, to make them all gone. So I'm giving you a bit, bit of a chance here to receive some peace and quiet. And it it's sort of works with the game. Right. Well, you know what? Tell you what. Let's have an Explore 2. We'll do this in two parts. And that way... Um, we can get started again sometimes during explorers or when you're live coding and playing around something goes wrong <laughs> so just like coughed it at. Um, so the the longer we go the, the more risk there is that we might have to do the explorer over again I I don't recall ever doing an explorer over again the explorer is sort of looser and hey whatever happens it's, it's all part of the exploration but uh, also, for your listening, you might, you might want to take a break, too. Let's um, come back, and we'll have a part two to this explore, because uh, we've still got some fun things to, to look through. All right, so this has been a uh, Zim Explore, and I am Dr. Abstract. Uh, we are here at Zim, zimjs.com, and it's uh, great that you're here if you been listening to us this long, then you seem to be into Zim. And I would highly recommend that you join us at zimjs.com slash slack, S-L-A-C-K, 
where we have a channel and we talk about things. You can show us what you've been building, ask any questions. We'll see you then. I'm Dr. Abstract. Have a great night or day. Ciao.